Welcome everyone to another great episode of Tea Time with Tommy. All right, guys. And uh, right now we have a special guest here with us, Impact Wrestling's Tasha Steeles. Tasha, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you. And of course, guys, you know Sean Columbus and um, Norris Cabrera as well as my co-host. So guys, let's get right into it, Tasha, right off the bat. Uh, first question, like, you have these cool finishers. One's called the uh, Hard Knocks Drop HKD, and the other one's called the Occur. Oh, where did you come from? These? Occur? <laughs> where did you come up with these cool finishing moves tasha um you know um trish stratus is one of my favorite wrestlers um trish stratus and you know i have uh, triple h amongst other uh w former WWE superstars but they're they're like my two favorites and um you know i've always watched trish growing up and uh she just had these cool moves that you haven't seen anybody else do and when she does like her her stratosphere or her stratisfaction i always wanted to do it so um when i tried it you know and i tried it at training it was just something that I, I i could just easily do it was just something i could easily get into so i would i would just do the stratisfaction like nothing and of course you know uh the other finisher though is um it's just it's the cutter and uh randy orton is also one of my favorite uh wrestlers so um i mean the cutter is just out of nowhere of course you can do it from anything out of any situation and hitting it is no problem and i got the word um actually from cardi b because she says oh, so you know Ooh. i was like you know if i say it in wrestling then it shouldn't be a problem because nobody <laughs> else says it <laughs> so, and of course, to me, I call Cardi like my tia, which is aunt in Spanish. So um, I would just say, you know what, if anything, I'm like, you know, I got it from Titi Cardi, so it's fine. So that that's how I, I came up with it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. I, I also like the, the, the cutter as well. It's such a unique uh, move. And you, yeah, and you're right. You can do it anywhere for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my uh, question is, um, uh, which uh, match uh, in particular that uh, in your wrestling career so far that has stood out the most to you and, and has meant so much to you? Um, I would have to say, uh, and I've, I've, this is no disrespect to any of the girls um, that I've gotten in the ring with, um, but I really would have to say uh, the match between myself and Diamante, which was uh, WrestleMania weekend of 2019. Cool. And that, I feel to me, I was already trying to um, find myself, you know, the Boricua badass, you know, the persona. I was really still trying to push myself out there. But it was like finding that one match that will help solidify your career even more. And, um, you know, when I was talking to Joe Kim, who is uh, one of the owners of Battle Club Pro uh, Wrestling, uh, Battle Club Pro Wrestling, I'm sorry. Um, he came to me and he told me, you know, it's WrestleMania weekend. You know, everybody's in New Jersey, New York. Um, I know this is going to be a big deal. So I want to give you this big match. And I gave him a list of people who I always wanted to give a ring with, like Sue Young, Kylie Ray, the list goes on and on. I gave him a list of people. And never in my life did I ever think he was going to, you know, grant me this wish and the first person on my list was Diamante you know who is also my prima which is um cousin in Spanish and um she like when he spoke to her you know she was 100% down with the match and uh he didn't tell me until like I think it was like a month or two before he had the Women's Crush Wednesday uh show that Wrestlemania weekend because it kicked off Wrestlemania weekend so when he had that show it was like a month or two before and he said you know i have a surprise for you and um i had this match and he told me who it was and i was like super stoked because i was like man you know i've, I've always watched diamante back you know and impact and everything like that so i always wanted to get in a ring with her and when i did like when we had the match we didn't even we didn't even lock up we didn't do anything we were just staring each other down and the whole place went nuts like it was at, at least a good 500 to a thousand people and 
the place just went nuts and it was just like you just heard the diamante tasha seals and it was just it was nice. just crazy <laughs> and i was just like this is my freaking match right here like i was i was just like like i just <laughs> was able to do any and everything that i could possibly do to push myself more as as this great wrestler this great street fighter you know it was just that match just helped me help my career push even more and i couldn't thank diamante enough so there it is awesome hello tasha so i know women's wrestling's evolved so much over the years Mm -hmm. And was there a particular women's wrestler that inspired you while growing up? I know you mentioned Trish Stratus mm -hmm. before with the move. So just wondering if that's the key one. Well, it's, um, also, it, it wasn't just Trish. It was also Jazz and, and Jacqueline and Ivory and, and, of course, women like, you know, Mickey James and Victoria and AJ Lee. All these women, they had brought different styles to the table when they were in their and their prime. So um, watching them, it just helped me more uh, get more inspired because it's like they're doing things that people wasn't expecting them to do because you know, you're expecting them to do like bra and panty matches and all these other type of gimmick matches that, you know, pushes their sexuality more, you know, and um, just for them to show that they can get in a ring and they can whoop ass, you know, excuse my French. <laughs> um, it just, it, it just inspired me more to be like, oh, I can do this too. Like, I don't have to just be in wrestling to just do these spanking matches or anything like that. So these women, they actually help inspire me. And, um, you know, I'm able to, I was, I'm a happy to say that, you know, today I was able to meet every last one of them, you know, during my, my wrestling career. So um, it's, it's amazing. I just, I just, I, look, I like saying that. It takes practice. It does take practice, rolling your R's, but eventually you get it. Mm. A lot of people say they can do it, but I I teach them, I teach them, you just got to roll your R's and you do it. <laughs> no pressure. And then the next time they see me, I have them do it. Like I have Josh Matthews doing it. Trust me. When he, at first, he was like, I'm not doing this. This is crazy. And then when I see him now in Nashville for tapings, I'd be like, Josh, and he'll go, oh, so it's fine. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up that for you, Tasha. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, going on, if you had if you had three wrestlers you would love to wrestle in wrestling history, if you pick those three out, who would those three wrestlers be? Is it men and women or just women? Uh, yeah, uh good question. You know what? Either <laughs> or, either or. You know, um, I would just love to like spar with Triple H just like grapple just like matt wrestle because i like i just know he comes from an old school background so i can learn a lot from him on that um uh let's see who else i would love to get in the ring with charlotte flair um she's just over the years she has proven that she's more than just a name um she's more than just you know rick flair's daughter and she's proven that over the years so i would definitely love to I know I would have like a great one-on-one -on -one with her. Um, and uh, third person, uh, you know, because, you know, he's passed on, but Eddie Guerrero is also one of my favorites. And I would have loved to learn a lot of Lucha from him, you know, and those three different elements just combined one is uh, is the Boricua badass. So, um, you know, I would I would have loved to get in the ring with Eddie Guerrero if I would, if he was still alive today. Great choices, yeah. great choices. Yeah, very amazing. Um, you know, with the pandemic happening right now, um, like, what's it like uh, wrestling uh, without the live uh, crowd being there? Um, to me, it's, it doesn't bother me much, you know, um, because the simple fact it helps rest. I, I say this all the time. It helps wrestlers um, with promos more. And it does help them develop their characters more um, because you're used to having the audience and it's kind of like a little bit of a distraction. So mm -hmm. now that you're, it's you and this other person in the ring or it's you, you have to cut this promo in front of this one camera by itself. This is like your ultimate test. So can you do it? You know, this is the type of stuff that we've been trained for, for over the years. So it's now here, we're put to the test during this pandemic during TV time, like, can you, can you do this? Can you cut this promo for five minutes without having the audience 
say stuff for you to react to or can you can you do it by yourself can you have this match with this person without the crowd you know cheering or booing or anything like that and you could still mm-hmm. have your character and you could still put on a show and you could still do all the like for to me I, I i love it because it is like the ultimate test and and i've been i've been able to do it either or like when i go to training we have matches at the end of training so it's it's literally wrestling with no crowd so it's like there's a practice right there. So um, some people may be like a little, I don't know about this, but to me, either or, I, I love it. I'm able to just get in a ring and do what I still do what I do, still love doing what I'm doing, and that's all that matters to me. Great. Yeah, it's definitely a different scenario without a crowd right now. And I know you recently got signed to Impact Wrestling this past May, mm-hmm. which is a huge accomplishment. And yeah. what, what do you see unique about competing in the knockouts division versus other organizations you've wrestled for? You know, um, being back, being backstage like at NWA and uh, WWE and NXT and Ring of Honor, um, it was just something different versus being backstage at Impact. Not because like majority of the girls at Impact, I'm already friends with, I'm already cool with, like I've, I've been around them majority of my career but it's just everybody is so like helpful off the bat you know these girls they went to bat for me to want me to be an impact you know they were requesting me they wanted me to be there and they kept pushing for me to be there and it's just when you feel that just walking in not even like having to sit down and talk with each and every one and when you get that feeling when you when you first walk in to have a match at impact it's just this is the place you want to be at, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just, they make you feel like at home and, um, you don't feel uncomfortable, you know, you don't feel like, you know, this one is this big star and she doesn't talk to anybody or this one is just (laughs) only friends with this one. So, you know, you don't, you don't feel that vibe, you know, not to say that all the rest of the locker rooms had that vibe. I mean, NWA didn't have that vibe. Um, but just, it's just, it was just impact that, they will bring in anybody that the no- girls, the knockouts would say, hey, listen, this girl is perfect for our roster. You need to bring her in. And sure enough, like, you know, Gail Kim and, and, and Kiara and Havoc and, and uh, these other, all these other girls, they just pushed for me, you know. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be at Impact. I'm grateful to sign with Impact during this time, during the pandemic, because I wasn't expecting it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm going to just. I'm going to keep doing what I got to do to keep my name alive in there, you know? Exactly. Bring that different flavor. <laughs> For sure. Oh, and uh, a, ma- a major congratulations from us three, uh, Tasha, of uh with impact and we Thank truly you. believe that you're going to be a huge star for that, uh, for the wrestling promotion at impact. Uh, so we're going to have trivia time now, Tasha. So these I'm questions, ready. <laughs> able to answer them. So, uh, I apologize. These are tough. However, you get three lifelines, so you can use those three lifelines and ask Sean or Norbs to help you answer the question. So you're good. You got you get three. So here we go. Okay. Trivia time with Tasha Steele. Question <laughs> number one: What U.S. state is John Cena from? What U.S. state? Massachusetts. Boom. <laughs> one for one. Uh, as listening to Tasha, only eight people have gotten perfect on the t- in the history of tea time. You could be the ninth now, so you're on the road on track right now. So. Oh, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that because um, I've been in and out of Massachusetts uh, a lot because I was with Chaotic Wrestling. You know, I'm, I'm that was their women's champion there. So everything was John Cena up there. John Cena, Sasha Banks. You know, Donovan died. That, it was just a lot of them from Massachusetts that you would hear about them all the time. So it just it stuck in my head. <laughs> I was told that. Uh, question uh, number two. What is Big, uh, Becky Lynch's nickname? What was her nickname? The man. The man. Oh, all right. <laughs> Cruising through this. Here on the roll. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here, here come the tough ones now. Uh, question number three. What was the main event at WrestleMania 18? And you have a lifeline. You can you have three lifelines. Oh, no. Wait. This is one of my favorite WrestleManias. Uh, the main event was... Um, I don't know. Wasn't it Triple H versus Chris Jericho? It was... No. It was Hogan versus The Rock. Yes! 
Wait, WrestleMania 18? Yeah, it was WrestleMania 18 in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I think that was one of the main events. That was one of the main events. One of the main events. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, you know what? So you almost got it right. I think it was a triple threat, now that I think of it. So Chris Jericho, Triple H. I think there was one other. That was the last match of the night, actually. Last match. Jericho and Hope. Triple yeah. H and Jericho. That had to be Jericho. the main event because Triple H yeah. just won the uh, Royal Rumble that January when he came yeah. back with his injury. That was the, that was the main event. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was there stuck you in the crowd right now. Sean was there at the big house. No worries. Jackie White was one of my favorites. Jackie White was one of my favorites because he came back from an injury, won the Royal Rumble, and got that double title at WrestleMania. In Toronto. So, wow. so Tom, we may have to give that one to her. Maybe. You know what? You're a special yeah. guest. <laughs> Arbitrator. <laughs> three for three. Arbitrary. Three for three. So, okay, this, I have to admit, Tasha, I apologize. This is like the toughest question in our uh, Tea Time trivia wrestling history. So please okay. feel free to keep the lifeline on this one. I'll be okay. very, uh, yeah, I'll be very, uh, here we go. Where did the first Survivor Series take place? First Survivor Series. Oh, Very, I'm, I'm definitely, yeah. I'm definitely gonna have to use the lifeline on that one. Absolutely. Uh, which one do you want to use, uh, Sean or Norbs? I'll do Sean. Sean, do you? <laughs> I think you should ask Norbs. Yeah. <laughs> can we, can we switch <laughs> lifelines <laughs> while I'm talking about it? <laughs> okay, Norbs. Okay, Norbs. Going back. Uh, you can use both. You can use both. Both of you guys, you, uh, Norbs and Sean, coming. Uh, Very young. Yeah. Very young. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was I was pretty young then. Uh, was it uh, Richfield, Ohio? Oh, folks! <laughs> yes. Got it? Wow! Got it. <laughs> to the rescue! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Four for four. All right, Taja. Here we go. If you get this next one, you will become our ninth. Perfect. Tea time with Tommy. Trivia winner. Here we go. Drum roll here. All right, so this is uh, a true or false. So you get 50-50 shot. You still use a lifeline, but you get 50 or 50 chance of this. Did Trish Stratus win her first championship title at Survivor Series? Was it at yes, Survivor Series? Boom. <laughs> five, my girl, five, my perfect. <laughs> our ninth. Amazing. Perfect time <laughs> trivial winner. Awesome deals. Take a bow. Amazing job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, five for five. Uh, so, Tasha, I just wanted to say for uh, from us three, for myself, thank you uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. And uh, would you like to uh, promote a- anything or say uh, about your social media so people can follow you on Twitter, Instagram? Um, Well, first off, I would like to say uh, Slammiversary is July 18th. Um, Everybody go order it on uh, Fight TV and uh, other cable providers uh, for pay-per-view. I, myself, along with uh, my bestie in crime, Kara Hogan, we will be competing in a knockout gauntlet. It was just announced today. Um, It will also be for the number one contendership. So whoever wins, whether it's Deanna or Jordan, I really don't care. I'm taking that. So I'm going to be securing that bag early, and I'm going to be waiting to see who's winning that uh, that women's knockout title. Uh, so that's amongst, uh, the course, uh, Willie Mack and Chris Bay match. So those are the three matches that's been announced so far. Um, so everybody go and order uh, Slam Anniversary, July 18th, once again. Um, you can also follow me on social media, uh, Instagram and Twitter, at Real T Steals. That's one word, um, S-T-E-E-L-Z. Um, and, of course, Facebook is Tasha Steels. Of course, go and get the merch, uh, prowrestlingtees.com slash Tasha Steels. I have a lot of new merch coming soon, so um, definitely go and check out, get some new merch. Every new merch, of course, comes with a free autograph, 8 by 10 So go go get it, guys. And uh, I thank you guys for having me on. This is really, really fun. Oh, thank you for coming on, Tasha. Don't go anywhere. And... Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another great episode of Tea Time with Tommy. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks again, everyone. Take care.